Hello, it's Mr. T again with another math tutorial. Uh, today we're having our second in a series on complex numbers. In our last tutorial we talked about and introduced what complex numbers were and how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, and take the absolute value of complex numbers. And today we're going to be applying them when we're solving quadratic equations. Uh, I'm going to review three problems today, uh, solving using square roots, completing the square, and quadratic formula. So this is a follow-up also on those tutorials. Uh, this problem, we have a quantity squared and everything else is numbers, so it's uh, perfectly made up for solving with square roots. So we want to get the part that's squared by itself, so I'm going to subtract 72 from both sides. So that equals negative 72. We want to divide by 3. And I have x plus 4 quantity squared equals negative 24. And to undo this square, we square root both sides. And we remember there's both a positive and a negative square root. Now the first time through on quadratic equations when we ran into a square root of a negative number we stopped and said no solution. But to be more precise there is no real solution or no real number solution. But now that we've increased our uh, number classifications to include complex solutions, we can now solve this. So anytime we have the square root of a negative number, we're going to have a complex solution. So on this side, we've got x plus 4. And over here, remember, we're going to split the square root of negative 24 into the square root of positive 24 times the square root of negative 1. And this can be simplified. We can divide it by a perfect square. We can divide it by 4. Now remember, this is the definition of i. Here we have radical 6. And 4 is the 2. Now to avoid being confusing whether this i is under this radical symbol or not, the standard uh, order when we have radicals and i's is to put the i between the whole number or the coefficient here and the radical. Now we can do that because we've got three things multiplied here and multiplication is commutative meaning the order doesn't matter so we can shuffle the terms around. So back up here I've simplified that. I showed that over here. So we've got plus or minus 2i radical 6 and now we can solve for x by subtracting 4 and our final answer here would be negative 4 plus or minus 2i radical 6. So we have two complex solutions here negative 4 plus 2i radical 6 and negative 4 minus 2i radical 6 and since we have the i here these are both complex numbers. You might also recognize that those two complex numbers and this solution are complex conjugates because they're the same thing in plus and minus. When we have complex solutions when we are working with quadratics, those solutions will always come in pairs and they will always be conjugates of each other. So let's look at our second example here. Now this one uh, might be ripe for completing the square because all these numbers are going to be divisible by this 4. So remember we want to get the x terms on one side of the equation and our numbers on the other. We need a coefficient of the x squared to be 1 so we're going to divide by 4. So we have x squared plus 10x equals negative 70. 
Now remember for completing the square we're going to add a number to each side of the equation and we are uh, purposefully deciding the number to put here to turn this into a perfect square trinomial and to figure out that number remember we take half of B which would be 5 and square it so 5 squared is 25 and if we add something to one side of the equation we have to add to the other now we factor this perfect square trinomial so we're going to get X and if this is plus we've got plus here and we're going to be taking the square root of that number again if we foil that out x plus 5 times x plus 5 we've got that and now we have here negative 45 and now it's just like the previous problem the latter parts of completing the square are solving by square roots so we take the square root of both sides now again back in the first time through on completing the square we would have been stopping here and saying no real solution but now we can simplify the radical negative 45 and again we split it up into radical positive 45 times negative 1 and this is going to give us our i and again this is divisible by a perfect square 9 and 5 so we're going to get 3i radical 5 plus or minus 3i radical 5. Subtract our 5 to the other side and we have our complex conjugate pair as our answers. Okay, so this was completing the square. And our third example here, let's uh, get it equal to 0, so let's subtract the x squared and subtract the 2x. So I've got 4x squared minus 4x plus 37 equals 0. Now we could use the quadratic formula, I mean we could use completing the square here, but when I divide by 4 we're going to have a fraction here. Now that will work. So let's use the quadratic formula on this. So for this a is 4, b is negative 4, and c is 37. So if we put into the quadratic formula, we've got negative b or opposite of b, plus or minus, square root. Now here we have b squared, so negative 4 squared is 16. And then we have minus 4 times a, which is 4 times 37. And that's all over 2 times 4. So now we have to calculate here, and when we get, calculate that, we get square root of negative 576 over 8. And that happens to be 24 squared. So we get 4 plus or minus now 24 squared, but it's minus, so we get 24i. And that's all divided by 8. And to simplify, remember we have to divide out the 8. Which simplifies finally to be 1 half plus or minus 3i. So again, two complex solutions and they are the uh, complex conjugates of each other. Now let's wrap up just for one item. When we had the unit on quadratic formula, we talked about the discriminant and what's it good for. And it can be used for determining how many solutions a quadratic equation has. Remember the discriminant is the part under the square root sign in the formula. And when we did this the first time around, we were only dealing with real solutions. So if that number under the square root was negative, we said no real solutions. If it was zero, we have one real solution, positive two real. So now the thing we're going to change now that we have complex numbers is instead of no real solution, if the discriminant is negative, we now have two complex solutions.
So now our choices on a quadratic equation are two complex solutions, one real solution, or two real solutions. So good luck uh, applying this and you know, revisiting solving comp uh, quadratic equations now that we can solve all of them using complex numbers. So we no longer will run into the case of no solution. Have a great day.